Ops of Reddit what is the most suspicious thing you've ever caught somebody doing for a totally legitimate reason? Patrolling a military housing neighborhood. I had noticed a suspicious van parked around the area over the past few nights, always in a different spot, but I could never catch it coming or going. So around the fifth night of this. I hide my car and wait. Sure enough, the van rolls through. I waited a few minutes before following. Turn the corner and light up three guys rummaging through all the trash cans left on the street. Turns out, they were part of SID, Think and CIS. The show. But army version. They suspected someone in the area was cooking meth. And were going through that garbage cans to find discarded ingredients. I only found this out after getting chewed out after they called my supervisors. I still don't feel bad. No one told me. Once in the early 2000s my wife and I were together in the corner of an empty hotel parking lot. Ops pulled up and said the hotel manager reported us as suspicious. We were like uh. We're just stealing the hotel's wireless internet. He looks in and sees us both with laptops on our laps and a miniature printer on the dashboard. The cop just laughed and said never mind. Found a guy parked behind a middle school around 5.30 am on a weekday morning during the school's winter break, so no one should be there. He didn't have much of an excuse as to why he was there, but nothing else was out of place and he wasn't wanted. It wasn't until he drove away and I looked around where his car was parked and I found out what he was doing. He had taken a massive dump that was just sitting on top of the snow still steaming. Made me laugh so hard all I could do was kick snow over it and go 10-8, available for calls. I was the only one on the block that didn't come out of the house after a neighbor was shot with an Alaska 47 at about 4.45 am. So my house was suspicious. The cops came over and banged and banged on the door. They thought it was me. I slept through the whole thing. Took the cops quite a while to wake me up. I had no alibi. My roommate slept through it too. Into weird. I come out of my room 1114. First thing I notice is that the carpet is super cold on my bare feet. Into irksome. But my roommate or I had probably left the patio door cracked when we smoked a cigarette at some point. Then I see it. Front door to the apartment is open. Sheet rock and door trim all over the floor. Somebody had broken into our apartment. I called the cops and started taking inventory. My laptop is 5 feet from the door. Big TV is another 5 feet away. Nothing taken. Cop that eventually showed up noticed shoe prints on the door. And couldn't believe that neither my roommate or I had woken up to somebody kicking the door in. Made us show him all the shoes each of us owned. Just to make sure the shoe print didn't match one of our own. Neither of us had been drunk the night before. But it had enough to drink that we just slept comfortably through it. Closest we could figure. Somebody came home after New Year's Eve party. Got pissed his key wouldn't work. Picked down the door only to realize it wasn't even his apartment. I was just starting on the street around the time Pokemon Go was taking off. So many contacts in the middle of the night that were just people trying to catch Pokemon. Me. Ma'am I noticed you're driving in circles around this closed business at 3 a.m. Person, yeah, there's a herd of Charmanders here and it's too busy during the day me. Oh thanks for letting me know. Pulls out phone and opens Go. Here's a story from a family friend who was a sergeant in a major west coast city one of his new officers was late for roll call one night. After about 45 minutes sergeant. That's a call from another station asking if he was the sergeant. For the missing officer. Hilarity ensues. Apparently. The missing officer was getting ready to leave his apartment for roll call for the night shift. As he walked out to the stairs. He sees a guy in a ski mask hop through his neighbor's window. Op radios the burglary in progress and runs back to his apartment to get his shotgun. When he gets back to neighbor's house. He heard a female screaming and the sounds of a struggle. Op announces himself, picks open the front door. Runs to the kitchen and sees what he thinks is ski mask guy sexually assaulting the neighbor. The neighbor sees cop with shotgun screaming at ski mask guy and she completely freaks out. Turns out ski mask guy was neighbor's boyfriend husband doing some sort of role play fantasy at neighbor's request. At least nobody got shot and apparently. The cop was known thereafter as Officer Cockblock. I know I'm kinda late here. And it's another I'm not a cop. But. Situation. But I'm kinda hoping this cop uses Reddit and will see this. One night I was coming home from a friend's house. It was late, like 1 or 2 am. And their house is known for a bit of partying. And this was a relatively rural area so cops don't have much to do. I hadn't been drinking or anything that night and there wasn't a party. So. As I'm driving home down the windy back roads. I hit a skunk. Well. I didn't hit it. It went basically right under my car and I heard a bit of a noise. I keep driving. But after 5 or 6 minutes. My AC starts pumping out the worst smell you've ever smelled. I know it's the skunk. I'm only like 10 minutes from home. So I try to stick it out. I roll down the windows and kinda stick my head out, Ace Ventura style. 
It's not working. The smell is overwhelming. Now. I have to vomit. I pull over, put my hazards on. And start puking on the side of the road. After a minute or so. The cop pulls up and puts his lights on. I'm still vomiting. He gets out and sees this mid-twenties dude with tattoos and a nose ring puking. As he's walking towards me. He starts saying well. Well. Looks like maybe someone had a bit too much to drink Tony oh Jesus Christ what the fuck as he's walking by my car he can smell the skunk. He starts dry heaving and pukes a little bit. All through my vomiting I'm saying I hurl hit a skunk. I think her lit stuck in the undercarriage. We both kinda just back off until we can talk again. And then he helped me poke the skunk off of the bottom of my car while we both dry heaved. Using his extendable baton, nightstick. Do we still call it that? Then once it was off he just kinda nodded and was like okay good luck kid and got in his car. We both seemed pretty embarrassed. Whoever you were. Pop. Sorry you didn't get the easy arrest you thought you had. But. Thanks for helping me get that skunk off of my car. Son of a cop me dad told me about a time. Back in the 80s. My father was sitting in his cruiser. Around the corner form a bar. The car drives by swerving a little with exhaust coming for the tailpipe. Signifying a recently started vehicle. Pulls the guy over. Smells alcohol on the driver. While also noticing a large staff in the backseat. He has the driver step out. And inquires about the staff. The driver tells my dad I'm a black belt in kung fu. I use it in class. So my father. Unconvinced. Ask him to demonstrate his proficiency with the staff. Wells proving his sobriety in a sort of. Imprint. Field sobriety test. The driver puts on a little show for dad on the side of the road. Dad's enjoying the show. But starts to hear sirens coming from all directions. A passerby had seen my dad on the side of the road in a face-off with a crazy man and a stick. Thinking my dad was in need of help. The passerby called the cops. Apparently. My dad had been so wrapped up in the show. He had not heard the radio calls for him. So dispatch sent all available units to his rescue. Passerby thought my dad was getting ass kicked by ninja. TLDR, it was Brussels sprouts I'm the guy who was doing something suspicious, but it kinda fits here. When I used to work at a grocery store I would get off some time between 10pm and 12am, and I also preferred to ride my bike most of the year to save on gas. Since work was close to my house and there were few cars out I never really bothered with lights. Already suspicious I know. Right around Thanksgiving we would get in these massive stalks of Brussels sprouts. Which if you have never seen one they look like something you might find growing on an alien planet. A solid 3 feet of little bulbs at the end of spikes basically. They were super cheap, so I couldn't pass up such a deal. But of course the only way for me to transport it home at night was to ride with the stock sticking a foot out of my backpack. I have no idea what the cops thought it was when they pulled me over. Marijuana. A weapon they were doing their deal, where one talks to me and the other checks me out from behind when the one behind me busted out laughing. Are those Brussels sprouts they let me go a minute later. I find so many suspicious vehicles in our National Veteran Cemetery in my jurisdiction. They almost always turn out to be Pokemon goers. 3 am on a weeknight and I pull up behind a car at a light. The light is green and the car is stopped, but running, foot was on the brake. Light turns red so I wait behind him. Light turns green again, and this dude isn't moving. So my partner and I quietly exit our vehicle and approach his. He was completely passed out. Asleep. But the car in drive. We woke him up and talked to him to make sure he wasn't drunk and he was just tired because his wife had a baby a few days ago and needed him to run to the store for something. That newborn sleep deprivation is real. I'm in the local saltwater aquarium club. It has always been a joke that the cops have come to quite a few of our houses when they see grow light in the basement for corals. The cops usually check electric records and show we all have extremely high electricity usage and thus can usually get a warrant to search the place. It's never happened to me but has happened to people I know. Cops usually get a good laugh out of it and are amazed to see the coral growing sightings people run. Conclusion. If you want to grow weed in the basement. Grow coral upstairs. I am the suspect in this situation. I lived in a large town in the south of the UK in my own terraced house. Outside my house was a bus stop, so it had a few people would who go by outside each day but it wasn't in the heart of the high street. I had suffered from cluster flies for a few days and they came out of nowhere. We are talking maybe 50 or so which is a little alarming, but there was nowhere I could see they were coming from. I got rid of them as quick as they came about and went about my day as normal. One day at the weekend I had a knock at the door with riot police who stated they believed that someone had died in the property and they were able to enter under an emergency act of law without a warrant. In their wisdom they spoke to the neighbors about who lived here after a report from an elderly lady visiting the bus stop. The neighbors mentioned my ex-girlfriend who they didn't see for a few months. 
We broke up and she moved out, but the police put the fly's report and this fact together as me being a killer, the police were sure I had something to hide as they instantly didn't believe I owned the house. I work in it. So make good money and I'm thankful I saved hard to get on the housing ladder, but they weren't having any of it. I had to then wait under surveillance while my house was searched and riot police all in the street. I am a keen gardener and upstairs in the airing cupboard I was attempting to grow some from seeds. The police were convinced that 23-year-old me was instead running a cannabis factory. In the end they found no dead body and they realized their mistake when I pointed out the 50 cacti around the house they conveniently didn't notice. I'm sure I'm on some kind of list now, but they left almost disappointed that their amazing detective work found in it nerd that likes spiny flora and not the next serial killer. TLDR. Police thought I murdered my ex-GF and was running a cannabis factory in my home. Police officer here. Long story short. I gets locked out of his house by his wife and we catch him trying to get back into his house. It was just after midnight and we got a call of a suspicious person looking into a home. We respond code 2, lights. No sirens and switch off the lights before we get close to mask our approach. As we pull up to the house, we see no signs of anyone at the front of the house. So we walk around the rear and bam. I with a crowbar wrenching on the back door. I yell. Police. Drop the crowbar. Dude starts screaming and nearly crying because we scared him so bad. Turns out he went to Tim Hortons to get a coffee as him and the wife had a few drinks and he forgot his keys and cell phone in the house. She was so drunk she forgot he left and locked the doors like she does every night. Poor bastard tried to wake his wife up and she was passed out and didn't hear him. He grabbed a crowbar from his shed to try to pop the locking mechanism out and we caught him. We managed to get a hold of her by calling her on my cell. When she answered the door. She admitted to accidentally locking him out and gave us the exact same sequence of events. I honestly wish we had body cams so we could replay the poor bastard's face and high-pitched scream. Late note, wow my poor inbox. So to address a few things 1. Our service does not have tasers. We train constantly in advanced hand-to-hand -hand tactics. We are getting tasers soon though. 2. Our hands were on our guns. But after yelling the challenge and hearing him scream and drop the crowbar, we de-escalated the situation completely. When you hear a door being wrenched on. You know there may be an improvised weapon involved. Hence for officer safety we were ready should he charge us.